Hi everyone. Um, welcome to my live. Uh, I am really excited to speak with you guys today. Um, it's been a very interesting Monday so far. I have so much writing to do. I'm really kind of um, confused as to why like I somehow find the time to do a lot of what I do in a day, but I am just so inspired by these lives. I find that they really start some great conversations and I've gotten such great feedback that I don't want to not do this um, and then potentially miss an opportunity to connect with somebody. So here I am. <laughs> um, I think when I first started doing these, I kind of wanted to do more of an interactive live, but then I realized that it's actually a really great opportunity for me to just express a lot of the commonalities of what I see over the weekends um, and in the previous week in my facials and in my interactions with my clients because you know, the universe sort of just like feeds us with multiple themes. And when we're able to realize that many of us are going through a similar thing, it actually kind of empowers us to know that we're not alone and that we can move through and kind of get, um, get past some of those hardships, you know, with whatever lesson we're supposed to learn from them. So I don't know about you guys, but this full moon has been like, crazy. I've been so tired. Um, I feel like I cannot get enough sleep. And it's interesting because my husband and I got a new mattress and we were both kind of wondering like maybe we're just not used to such a comfortable mattress that it's keeping us up. But I do think that it's probably associated with the full moon and the energetics of the moon in Scorpio sort of bringing up what we are meant to face even if it's uncomfortable. And I'm really... I'm kind of excited because whenever I realize those coincidences with the universe of like how I'm feeling or maybe not even coincidences but synchronicities, it does sort of make me feel like, oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> um, but then the feedback that I get from my clients too also sort of confirms a lot of those synchronicities and I just think it's important to shed a lot of that insight. So um, before I move forward with some of the topics that I want to address today, um, I do want to make some acknowledgements and some announcements. First off, I haven't quite decided if I'm going to continue doing my Monday lives. I meant to just do it as a Monday uh, promotional tool for the month of April because I just released my online program and I wanted to kind of just like make myself seen and known which is just really uh uncomfortable for me like I don't really love um putting myself out there on a platform where I speak for an hour straight just my thoughts kind of improvised but it's a muscle that I am exercising in situational magnetism which if you've ever done any of Lacey Phillips work um her company with free and native any of her unblocked work or her formula and magnetism it's like whenever you are pushed to feel really uncomfortable, that just means that you're on the precipice of like finding your true self and just living more authentically. So it has been really rewarding and I've been really excited about it. I just haven't decided if I can carve out that time every week, but I'm gonna do the best I can um, and just make as many announcements as possible and hopefully be able to just upload whatever I can to YouTube as well. Um, I managed to be able to do it last week, thank goodness, because I felt like last week's live was so good. I'm still so bummed I lost the live on my tools, but I'm just going to give it a couple more weeks and I'll probably just do another one again and just see what comes out at that point because I, I know I had missed a couple of points while I was there and I actually did get some new tools this weekend, so there's just always something cool and fun to talk about. Um... But yeah, no, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the lives. I really like them. But my main intention is that um, I really want to do a podcast, a podcast called Honest Health with Haley, where it's going to be a therapeutic skin coach podcast. Like the main themes are definitely going to be, you know, skin care and holistic health and intuitive, you know, 
knowledge that leads you to discovering how to live your best self, uh, your, your best life by being your best self and how that then reflects into your best skin. However, I am just a little blocked on a couple of the challenges that you, you know you encounter when you take on such a role. Um, like I've gotten some pieces of equipment which I'm you know really excited about and I started to just kind of play with them last week and they're not quite right that like the mics I bought are a little like fuzzy and they kind of just make me sound like an airline pilot. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this isn't really work and then I've tried a couple apps on my phone and that just doesn't sound quite right either and I'm just nervous about like starting something and not feeling very prepared but then at the end of the day that's kind of how I've started my whole practice anyway so just kind of keep in mind that that's coming and it's literally at the forefront of my mind especially after releasing the therapeutic skin coach online program like I felt like that was the next step but the online program is still so like close to me right now because it just launched we're still kind of in a beta phase where I'm seeing who the market is for because I would love for everybody to purchase it and to benefit from it but I want to make sure that I am reaching the audience that it needs and you know, I've been faced with like, did I price it too high? Am I um, like just kind of unintentionally like ostracizing a huge amount of people? Is it even just reaching the right type of audience? Do people in LA even care to do it? Like, should I be reaching out beyond? Um, Cause I feel like I am, but I'm in such a bubble and I don't actually really know the majority of my analytics in terms of like, who's really watching me from where. So I'm discovering a lot of that, which has been really fascinating because just to find out who is um, interested in my content and in my business versus who might not be or who it just hasn't reached yet, like it's all sort of this unfolding path and it's very vulnerable for me to just kind of put myself out there with it. But I really believe in the program that I've created. It's essentially what I do with any new client. So if you go to my website and you go to book a new appointment, you'll see that there are like 15 or so questions about your health history that I go through. And whenever I would just get a new client, I would take that information as their consultation intake and then also just kind of transform it in a document full of resources, recommendations, supportive like uh, action steps and just insights as to how each and every part of their health really correlates to what's going on on the skin. Now what I did with the program is I essentially took all of those questions and created it in a way where you can discover a lot of that on your own. Now, that might seem like, well, why would I go and do this on my own if I can see you? Well, that's kind of just the thing. I, I created this intuitive practice because I want my clients to develop this innate ability to listen to their body, listen to their skin, listen to themselves, because we all have really great intuition. And if we just work on refining it, um, by my using utilizing my coaching skills, uh, we can determine a lot about our health, not just with our skin. And it also helps us embrace our individuality and our unique set of cells and then possibly help with your appreciation for who you are because I think that we're all very unique and we're all very special and we really, really deserve to feel like you know, we're not a one size fits all. So it helps to kind of open up that window of understanding for yourself. And it just helps you kind of go through each avenue of like how it all interconnects. So it's not as complicated as, as it sounds, but it's also very integrated. There's so much information in there that is incredibly valuable for anybody. So if you are a mother whose teenage daughter or son is experiencing breakouts for the first time, this is perfect for them. If you're somebody who's in their four, first, second, third pregnancy and you're experiencing these ups and downs with your hormones and your skin is reflecting that, the program is perfect for you. 
And if you're somebody who's just never thought about their skin, regardless of your gender, regardless of your age, regardless of your ethnicity, regardless of your financial situation, this is the perfect program for you because it really hones in on you. That's the main thing. Um, so yeah, a lot of my energy has been put into that. Therefore, the podcast idea, which I was so pinged with and I feel really passionate about, I know it's gonna come. I just am such a Virgo, I'm perfectionist. I really want like my mics to sound good and for it to just be what I know it's capable of being. So I really suspect that it's gonna be a lot of these types of conversations where I am able to and just talk for an hour or so about some of the synchronicities and similar patterning that I, I notice within my practice. And that kind of ranges from emotional well being to physical health to just a specific skincare ailment or question. And then I also have such a beautiful community of people that I'm really excited to give a platform to, whether it is a naturopath who focuses on hormonal health to a um a body talk acupuncturist that i know a uh personal trainer who is allergic to dairy and has to struggle with like discovering how to eat and what to put on her skin while navigating the ups and downs of exercise in the morning what to do with your skin like there's so many people i also have some really great entrepreneurial uh friends who i think just shed a lot of light and inspiration on what it's like to just be on the grind and have this like journey of self acceptance and whether or not they are struggling with skin imbalances, it's just really important to tell their stories as well. Especially um, because I feel like a lot of people forget that I'm also an immigrant, like I'm not from this country and I have no plan B, I have no, you know, side thing that I can fall back on. I don't even have family in this country other than my um, in-laws <laughs> and my husband, you know? Um, so I have to just like grind it out. Like this is my only option, you know? I mean, it's not my only option. If I ever choose to change my mind and do something else, I can do it, but this is my passion. So the way that it's gonna continue to evolve is gonna be just me continuing to like trial and error, trial and error, and, and go through the ups and downs of the failures that are inevitable when you're starting your own business and when you're a female entrepreneur in 2018, you know? So there's, there's a lot to be said, there's a lot to be discussed, and I think it's gonna be really great, so. That being said, some of the patterns that I noticed over the weekend um, and through the last month really um, has come into two main topics that I want to discuss, but one of which I'm going to talk about in the blog tomorrow. Um, so I'm just going to briefly touch on it now, just so you guys have something to look forward to. Um, and that is kind of just navigating the feminine and the masculine. Um, not just on a genetic level, because that's a whole other conversation, and I think that that's really fascinating. Actually, not to go on a tangent already, but like the first um, job I ever had, I was um, obviously like an esthetician, but I worked for a wig master who did wigs for cancer patients, uh, clients with alopecia, and then also... Um, uh, transgender people who were be the the majority of the people that we saw were transitional transitioning from male to female. So he was creating wigs for them and creating different looks for them, so that you know while they were going through their hormonal treatments um, to transition, they would um, you know get wigs or get you know get treatments and it was really fascinating because I got to be their esthetician I got to teach them how to use makeup I got to help them eliminate a lot of their body hair and I got to just help them with their skin imbalances throughout that transition because as you can imagine going from a male set of hormones to a female set of hormones and then all the emotional turmoil that kind of comes with that was really fascinating. I was 19, had no education on the transgender community and it felt like I got the best education and I was just exposed to so many wonderful people. So like that is a topic 
in and of itself discussing the the differences between male and female uh gender and like that fluidity just in 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 its own right but i'm speaking of uh masculine feminine energetics so i believe that we have both regardless of your gender um we have both so how that shows up in your daily life can be you know different for all of us and just on a personal note, like I'm very, I have like this juxtaposition within my personality where I am a Virgo sun sign, but a Sagittarius rising. So I'm the divine feminine in a lot. And then I have like this bossy, bitchy, sort of like straight up, almost like masculine type of energy in an aspect of my zodiac chart, of my astrological chart. So it's really it's kind of this weird like balance I've just navigated my whole life but didn't really know how to categorize where um I'm a boss bitch like I can like do a lot have a lot on my plate and just kind of navigate and do you know run a business successfully but I get called a bitch a lot and I'm like I'm not a bitch I'm just direct and I don't and I would always have to kind of defend myself and be like my husband said this to a coworker, he would be praised, but why am I not getting praised? You know, like, why is it that I have to like really navigate this and try to be like too much of a, of a lady. And, and then it kind of falls into like, well, I do have a lot of that feminine energy. I'm very womanly. And so many ways I work in beauty. I love aesthetic. I love detail. I love softness. I love emotional tenderness. And then how do those two merge together? And what happens when one of those sides is being ignored, one of those sides is being completely, like it's taking over the other side and we're not kind of recognizing the fluctuations and that can manifest itself on the skin. So it's been a really interesting conversation I've had with a couple of my clients over the weekend, including um, Paula of Women's Space, who she and I got on the phone the other day because... I was just curious as to why last week I had this like really uh, like random occurrence of I had two events planned and both of them ended up getting canceled. The first one was with Cat Beauty and I was really surprised because we were fully booked but they called me before I went because as you might remember I spoke about it um, my last live. I was like gonna go and you know we had everything confirmed and they called me they're like we're so sorry but everybody just had to cancel last minute and I'm like how that's really uncommon and you know it I don't blame anybody because I think it just was like a fluke thing so I ended up having the afternoon to, to catch up on other stuff but was disappointed because I love the store and I love that community but I just felt like well you know I might as well take this as a sign that I'm supposed to stay home and work on other things so not a big deal, but then move forward to the other event I was supposed to have at Women's Space. I just, it just wasn't booking out. And I started to take it really personally because I put so much effort and time, energy, financial, um, like actual money towards this event. And we had so much expressed interest, but the, I think the timing just wasn't really aligned. And... I ended up having to make the call to cancel it because we didn't have as many signups as we would have needed to like really facilitate the event, which has really disappointed me because I've done events where I've been like sold out before and it kind of made me think like, oh my God, like, am I just not mag magnetic enough to like draw in a crowd? Like I, th I thought I had a following, but maybe people just don't give a shit about what I have to say. But I express that vulnerability to Paula and like being her true, authentic, magnetic, incredible self calls me and just has this incredible conversation with me where she just expresses like, you know, you've kind of gone through a lot. <laughs> you've had a lot of deaths. You've left a partnership in the last like, however, like four months. You, you just have a lot on your plate. Like there is a level of femininity that means that it's okay to shrink down like you don't have to keep expanding and getting big and putting yourself out there she's like you are allowed to have those moments of insecurity where 
like you don't have to keep pushing like just allow yourself to be still and be small and it resonated so much and it kind of just gave me permission to be like yeah yeah man like this has been really tough and I've had a lot go on and geez like I kind of I'm a, it's overwhelming to put yourself out there time and time and time and time again and like you know sometimes just not have it feel like it's like following through because the demand of me doing events and the demand of me doing interviews and lives and features and programs and facials and all like it's non-stop but that doesn't mean that I have to be non-stop like I can pause and like reflect because especially the way I handle grief is it really kind of correlates into my um my anger energetics I get really angry like my masculine kind of comes out where I just kind of want to punch people and I know that's first off I won't but I know that's not the answer so I kind of have to go inward and just sort of soften and just allow myself to breathe and feel and taking two days off the week that my grandmother died doesn't really equate to enough sometimes so you know the conversation on those energetics and the male and and the masculine and feminine really sort of resonated with me and then I started to see it kind of pick up in my conversations with my clients like one of which was experiencing uh disagreements with her partner and even just kind of acknowledging that there is a a masculine way of communicating and a feminine way of communicating was just really profound for us to have in our personal conversation so that she felt like she kind of had an insight to like what her partner might be experiencing too so yeah it was really interesting and it's really interesting to sort of feel the way I feel every day um in my like ultra masculine boss self because they work from home so I'm constantly sort of just like gotta get stuff done and I'm you know like putting on this like I don't want to say it's a front, but just putting on my, like, my superhero, like, I'm going to get it all done type of feel that, like, oftentimes my hair is pulled back. I have no makeup on. I'm, like, in my pajamas still. I look kind of not as, like, feminine as I could. And I see it on the masculine side of my face. So there are factors that are uh, reflected within our skin that are both masculine and feminine. If you look at this side of my face, I look like pretty well put together. It actually looks like I have an eyebrow lift. Everything looks great. And if you ever did like a full on retouch, you'd see I'm practically poreless. Like it's so beautiful, smooth, kind of great. And then this side is my masculine side and already my eyebrow is down. I, you can see a little bit more of my frowning. I've got some major adrenal fatigue, really, really like um, exposed like frown line. And honestly, there's a lot more redness here. I have no makeup on other than just a little bit of Wild People mascara. And it's like, what happened? Now, if you look at me as a whole, you kind of don't see it. And like, honestly, I pose like this in photos half the time, so you really can't see it. But when I go like this, it's really obvious that this part of me is getting overworked. So if I'm able to kind of relax, let it sort of sink in, I might be able to find that balance again where this side, which I feel my prettiest, my most like abundantly beautiful on, could eventually match this side. So... I don't know it's kind of it's a complicated um concept and I'm gonna dive into it a lot more on the blog even though I just like went on like 13 tangents on it but I also noticed that there was such a great pattern of people just like naturally wanting to reset themselves um around this time of the year now, if you don't live in Los Angeles, the weather is really nice. It's it's really great. There's a lot of blooms. There's a lot of, um, you know, just like sunny, happy, like sort of windy energy. It feels like spring. It feels like a proper spring, you know. And I noticed some of my clients that I've been seeing for months, um, they just started to kind of come in and, you know, I didn't prompt them to to switch anything in their diet or switch anything in their exercise regimen they just were coming to me saying like yeah I'm really dedicated now like now I'm going to make a change now I'm going to do 
like your initial suggestions almost. Um, cause I do make a lot of suggestions for exercise health and, and nutritional health and just mindful suggest, like I'm not setting people up with a meal plan. I'm not a nutritionist, but it's just, I almost like try to shed some light as to how certain things could be affecting the, the skin and just really simple ways as to how to make some adjustments without creating this shameful like disconnection from food because trust me I've had enough nutritionists and doctors in my life tell me like can you just keep eliminating different foods and I'm like do you not want me to eat because at this point I'm so disconnected from food that I don't want to eat you know so I I try to be mindful in my approach and in my verbiage that they just they see it as an opportunity to kind of experiment with themselves like okay so if you have this Maybe just write down how your skin feels about it. See if then something pulls up. See how you feel about it. Um, and then it kind of empowers them to make choices off of that information that their body is just telling them. Um, I've been doing that literally since I was 19. Like all of my clients have had like a nutritional conversation with me that I should just get my credentials. <laughs> you know, I should just get the, the certificate that you get. You know, it's just a matter of timing and preference like I kind of really don't even think like I need it but anyways these clients were coming in and just making some really impressive changes and it dawned on me because I, I think I might have spoken about this on a blog or on a live or something at some point but um the, you know a lot of the times in on in January 1st like we think that we're supposed to do our main like cleanse detox reset like purge and and honestly according to your constitution that might be the wrong time to make those adjustments because during the winter your body is still sort of in that hibernation mode where it needs a little bit more rest it needs a little bit more inward sort of energetics where you know, if the best you can do is like go on like a really mindful like walk and do some stretching and meditation and get a couple extra hours of sleep a night, like that's probably fine. Like that's enough for your body. And then based off of your specific constitutional needs or even your Ayurvedic dosha, there might be foods in which you uh, are like guided to eat for better health, you know? And during those times, it's not necessarily just like juice because that is, that could really sort of mess with your, um, with your energetics and with your immunity that it's just not gonna nourish you. It might just make you feel like temporarily lighter and cleaner, but the, the, the timing of it is just not quite right. So that's why people end up like crashing and burning. Like they, they're like, I'm gonna work out every single day. I'm gonna like detox everything. But it's, you know, there are some people who just like are very consistent and by the time that they make that choice, it's not that much harder for them because they're already in, such great health that like they're just kicking it up a slight notch maybe they're just detoxing slightly um so i thought that was really interesting but around springtime is when the energetics of our elements and of our systems actually could benefit from a detox cleanse reset whatever feels good to you to do um so i had a couple clients just sort of take these mindful steps on their own and their skin was reflecting that work so beautifully like some of the clients that I had seen had heavy inflammation a lot of I wouldn't even necessarily say acne because acne is a tricky thing to diagnose I don't think that might be a different live or a different post but acne is really commonly mis um, diagnosed because it's 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 associated with just any breakouts but breakouts don't always equate to acne. Acne is a serious condition that includes bacteria buildup, in like a highly inflamed skin, stagnation in the lymphatics, and usually a compromised barrier. Like there's a lot of factors to it where it can be uncomfortable to the touch, can be uncomfortable to even speak or move your face. And I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. I would say 
And there's different severities of acne too. So I would say the acne I had was probably like nothing. Like it was, if you were to look at it in terms of severity and its grade, I still was probably the lowest grade. I was still very much, um, you know, manageable. I didn't ever need to go on Accutane, you know? Like the cases of people where you look at them and you're like, that might be the drug for you, regardless of how harmful it is. Like that's a true case of acne. So whenever somebody is experiencing like a high level of breakout, like it might not be acne. So just as an aside, these two women that were seeing me for a while and had like pretty chronic cases of breakouts, um, we were able to kind of root it back to a couple things and just through our conversations and through their other healers because I'm just one member of their community of healers that kind of guides and supports them. They were able to just make some really mindful beautiful changes that I thought were really impressive. Um, and I'm going to just kind of note a few of the things that I noticed. First, one of them said to me, she's like, well, when I first started seeing you, I, I stated that I don't have gluten, I don't have dairy, I don't have sugar, like, you know, those, those main culprits that might show up in inflammation and uh, mucus build up in the skin. And she's like, and then I realized that's false. That's kind of like she was maybe 80 20, which is still really good for the majority of people. But in her case, you know, her body was maybe just not like showcasing that as well as she would have liked. Like, yeah, she wasn't eating a lot of it, but the eating even just the tiny bit was still making a difference. And so she committed to doing a full on elimination of them. And she didn't just do it in a way that was like almost like shameful and um, toxic to the body by shocking it. She did the homework and the way she planned to do it was very specific to her constitution. And I saw her skin after her doing this for a while and she had actually reached out in between appointments via email, which I think is so supportive like please if you ever have any questions if you're going through something in between appointments that communication is key because I can usually help if something is not right if something is just not feeling really good um I can tell you like okay yeah you need to eat this or yeah no you need to back off of that but if it's just kind of a process of that detox and that cleansing of the body, because the skin is part of our detoxification, at least I can confirm that for you so you can continue moving forward as opposed to feeling like, oh, nothing's working, my skin's getting worse. Like, there, you know, there is that, like it gets worse before it gets better. And that, that's true to an extent, like it might have to purge out. Um, or it, it is one of those things that like, yes, it's purging and it needs to come out, but like here are some supportive ways that it might not have to like fully find its way through the skin. There are some different ways to support the detoxification so that when you are eliminating a lot of foods and increasing your workouts and, you know, just making a lot more mindful conscious practices for your body, like it doesn't always have to reflect itself out on the skin that way. So she really inspired me and I was just like, get it girl, like felt really good. And you know, there's such an ebb and flow to it. Like it's, you know, the first couple days that you're doing it, you could start to really feel like shit. Like it could really make you feel crazy and like it's not worth it. But then once you kind of pass that like fifth, seventh day of making those mindful changes, whether it's eliminating a particular food or doing um, a cleanse like you are gonna try you're gonna probably start to make a like a turn in your health at that point and then by the time you get to like the 10th to almost 14th day you start to experience even more symptoms that are either productive or feel shitty. So it kind of depends on the level of toxicity in your body and if you're doing the cleanse or detox appropriately. And that's where, you know, your 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 um community of healers is just very valuable because even if you have to make a slight adjustment to what you're doing, like that can make the biggest difference long term. You know, and then by the time you reach kind of like your 21st to your 30th day, like those last few um, weeks, 
it starts to just become a part of your life and your habit and you realize like, well, not only does my skin look better, but my digestion feels better, my menstruation feels better, my sleep is better, and it's really inspiring. Now, my other client, um, she just decided, she has like a really severe case of scoliosis, and she decided like, you know, if I'm gonna invest in all of this um, physical therapy, I should just work out too. Like, let me find somebody to help me work out. And she created this incredible plan for herself where she, you know, like kind of went through like a Pinterest binge of like looking through and finding what what sort of workouts she was attracted to, like really allowing her intuition to guide her towards what she felt her body was going to really benefit from and then created a six day workout plan for herself and then goes once a week to boxing and her skin looked phenomenal and this is somebody who like eats really well ish you know kind of like that 80 20 thing where she might snack a lot you know or she just didn't wasn't getting enough movement to get that lymphatic support to detox any like waste in her system so it was really fascinating and it really just kind of inspired me because there are so many ways to look at these uh eliminations cleanses detoxes they can be very um i don't know triggering for some and they can also just be scary or uh sort of um What's the word I'm looking for? Trendy. Like, oh, sometimes I don't want to do something just because like everybody else is doing it. And like, is that really going to work for me? But these two really found what works for them. And they were able to like just recognize the changes in their system as it was kind of coming up. And they both noted that it was just sort of like, you know, like spring cleaning. They just felt like their bodies were finally ready to take that step. And it reminded me that like, you know, we're in these constant rhythms, we're in these constant cycles. And, you know, there is, there is usually like a really good goal that you're trying to get to, you know, whether it's, you want to look a certain way before the summer, or you've got an event that you're going to, or you have a photo shoot, or I don't, I don't know. But it is more of a lifestyle long term goal when you decide to make just any changes in your life. Um, and I do notice too, when it comes to people wanting to make like a detox for their skin, or they just want to switch to all uh, non toxic skincare, they kind of just jump the gun a little bit because they're they're inspired because the girlfriend did it and they look great and they just think it's gonna happen really quickly and then they try something and it doesn't work. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So wait, what inspired you to do this? Like what was the intention behind it? How, how did you even come to decide on these products? And it just, it doesn't come from this intuitive intention for them. It just comes from like, I saw them do it and I want that result. And that's where sometimes the the conversation just needs to be shifted towards like okay well what's your intention here what is it that you actually really want out of this is it because you're trying to make a mindful adjustment to your lifestyle long term or are you just inspired because you're comparing yourself to somebody who has a result that you want but you might just not be able to attainably have if you have your set intention behind it where you're comparing yourself you know, I, for a long time, I remember when I was like 28, turning 29, I was like, I'm going to spend my 29th year, I'm just going to get fit and I'm going to be really like solid. And then when I turn 30, I'm going to look the best I've ever looked because I had like fluctuated in my weight because of the high level in inflammation in my system due to adrenal fatigue, thyroid um, issues, like the, the post shingles, like body meltdown where I'm like in chronic fatigue all the time. Um, plus the candida that I have. And, you know, I'm not from LA, so it's so dry here that I just retain and hold things in a different way. And I am so aware of all that now, but the way I would treat myself when I was 
29 just kind of like begging myself to like be skinnier by the time I turned 30 it's as though I was like doing the opposite I actually ended up gaining more weight having a lower self-worth because I wasn't tuning in to what my body was actually telling me and there was just so much chronic stress that I was dealing with and I just kind of was adding more to my plate that by the time I turned 30 uh, like the weeks before I was eating next to nothing like literally eating baby food forcing myself to work out like an hour each day which exhausted me like I'm the type of person that like I'm exhausted going on a walk like I really have to be mindful of when I exercise because I really need to make sure my body gets the right amount of rest post so that I can you know, r recover. So my body just doesn't take on the extra stress, like as more work to do. And I wasn't cutting back on work. I wasn't cutting back on a lot of things. And I just wasn't like prioritizing my mental health either. So funny enough, a couple months later, I'm about to head to my honeymoon. And like, I just feel like shit. I'm really like fat, but not no, I'm not fat. Like I, I know that, but I was just like super bloated and just like, well, I'm not going to want to be very honeymoony on my honeymoon. And by the time I got there, I just relaxed. And honestly, then I looked great. It was like the, the, the pressure of like trying to meet a deadline for my body and my mind and my skin and my, this to all look a certain way was almost like making it worse. Which is funny because I like tell this to people all the time, but sometimes you just have to re-experience that in order to be like, you know, I'm hopefully going to be around for a while. I'm hopefully going to get the opportunity to live a really long, healthy life um, with my husband and with my dog and hopefully with a future family. So I have to start with self-acceptance. I have to start with just knowing that this is where I am. This is where I am today. Now, what can I do about it today? right? Like, let me find the things I'm grateful for first. I think that I am beautiful. I think that I am smart. I think that I am funny. I know that I am kind. I'm a hard worker. I have clothes that fit. I have food in the fridge. I have a dog that forces me to go on walks, but like really helps me like with my mental instability when I'm feeling really overwhelmed. And I have clients that come in weekly. Like to me, that's a lot to be grateful for. So if I can't fit a pair of jeans one day, like that's okay. Like that's, if that's my worst problem, I'm okay. Now, when you express all the gratitude for the things that are great in your life and are working in your life, it almost kind of like dims a little bit of the intensity of the thing that just might be brewing and tumultuous for you. Now, the fact that like sometimes my jeans don't fit, that's still a trigger and that's still something I don't necessarily need to avoid and ignore because a high amount of inflammation could eventually lead to other long-term problems. However, f putting that fixation off of it and just sort of having an understanding of like, okay, but this is where I am almost sort of opens up the, the, the light bulb and like the doorway to the answers, the solutions, because it isn't like a, a goal of um, I'm going to get here and then I'm going to be set and then I won't have to work anymore. Every single day you're going to have to work. Every single day you're going to have to do something to better yourself because it, you know, there is this process called aging that is just what happens if we're lucky. So when we shift the intention towards the positive and switch the intention towards like the small goals, the ones that we know are achievable, but also express gratitude for all the things that are working, it's, it's, it can really help you shift in the intention and find the, the actual solutions for you there. You know, like when I finally kind of let go and was like, whatever, I'm going to feel bloated on my honeymoon and I'm going to feel maybe just like a half size bigger than I would have wanted to be. Like I kind of let it go and then I look back at photos of me and I look great. I looked fine. We also always don't, 
I hate using the word always because there's never always anything, but there's, there's going to consistently be those times in which we look back and we're like, there, nothing was wrong with me. What was I complaining about, you know? And that's okay. That's okay to not have the self-awareness to know that like now is the present and there is a lot to be grateful within this time. But, you know, I think that just as, an, as a muscle that we have to kind of work through and practice with. And with the skin, you know, people are like, you have such nice skin. What do you do? What are your products? What do you do? And I'm like, well, my products are ever changing because I'm ever changing. And it's been like a 20 year practice of daily love and self care. And it fluctuates all the time. There are numerous times in which my skin is just reflecting imbalance nonstop. Like earlier in the live when I was showing part of my face that's showing like kind of like a weakened um, immunity due to like excessive masculine energy in certain ways where I'm not allowing myself to restore fully. You know, um, just know that like, yeah, like you could go towards a quick fix where you get a laser, you get Botox, you get a ton of chemical peels, but what is the side effect of that? Like, what are you going to inadvertently, um, sensitize or, uh, silence with that sort of band-aid quick fix type of, um, modality because, you know, I love technology. I love products. I love the fact that we have such a great big empire of skincare that there are, there's every, there's anything for everything. Like you can get a cosmetic repair surgery where you look completely different. Like that to me is fascinating. It's like a scientific crazy awesome thing and there's medications that you can take that do certain things in the body that like to me that's just like a really cool chemistry like science experiment but at the same time like we're such individual and we're so unique and we have our own chemistry science experiment going on within us at all times that like who's to say that those quick fixes aren't going to cause side effects that are much more detrimental long term. Now that's a whole other topic, right? Like that's okay to kind of shelve that conversation for another time. However, I the point is there's never really an end goal. There's just a goal of a daily check-in of how do I feel? What do I feel? Is this going to be based in fear? Is this going to be based in love? And I just advocate that you choose the, the experience that is based in love because sometimes I would rather sit and watch Netflix with the dog but it is actually a based in love decision because the oh but I gotta force myself to push myself to do this is actually based in fear. Now I'm not saying like choose the lazy option if you are trying to stay motivated but find the different ways to kind of um, inspire you that it isn't just like once I get to a size this waist and once I get to, you know, my skin feeling this clear and wrinkle free, then I know I've made it. Because honestly, you might have clear skin for like five months out of your life and then you go on a trip and something completely flares it up. That doesn't take away all the work you've done and all that self-care and, you know, it doesn't take away that your skin was great at one point. It's just it ebbs and flows. And when you surrender to that flow and when you surrender to the experience of life, you start to see that, you know, all of those markers, all of those communications can be silent if you choose the fearful choices of, well, I'm just going to overdo it. I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to do that. You know, I'm going to just quick fix, quick fix that is based in fear. If you love the intention, or if you have a self-loving intention behind it, it, it won't matter because there are so many years I spent in a body that was like 113 pounds and like super skinny what, and I hated myself. Now I'm a lot more than that, but I, 
I look at myself and I'm like, but this is the embodiment of your experience. This is a very small town girl who has moved countries, moved states, started a business, started a family, like has helped people along the way. If my this side of my face is just an expression of that work, then I'm fine with it. Then like be as old as you need to look and have an inflamed waist if that's gonna be what happens because then the lens of choosing like, okay, well if, if I am a little inflamed, I'm gonna have a little bit more coconut water today. I'm gonna make a cilantro mango cranberry coconut water smoothie with you know all the greens in it and just feel myself like flushing. But, it's not gonna be based off of like, I need to detox because I feel fat. Like there is no end goal. There is no perfect weight. There is no perfect skin. There is just a daily decision to be your best self and to be loving towards yourself. Because, you know, I think my, one of my best um, analogies for the, or maybe not analogy, that might not be the right word, but the best way I tend to wanna to explain this to people is like, well, how would you speak to your friend who was speaking to themselves the way you speak to yourself? Like if your best friend was like forcing herself to try to fit into a size that she doesn't fit or she was looking at herself with such hate for having breakouts or rosacea or eczema or whatever the case may be, like, you know, what would you say to her? You would say, I'm not seeing that. Like I'm not seeing this imbalanced, inflamed person with low self-worth. I'm seeing my best friend that's there for me. I'm seeing somebody who I enjoy spending time with. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what el what you see within yourself. You kind of have to look at yourself through the lens of other people. And if you are loving towards others, if you are kind towards the people in your community, if you you know, express gratitude for your existence, then they will find the loving, beautiful things about you no matter what. That's why whenever I get a client that comes in and I just see their light right away, I'm like, I know I'll be able to help you. If I see somebody that doesn't have light and if I see somebody that just is not, they're so blocked, they have so much work to do that they refuse to the point where they're projecting their, their darkness onto me, I can easily cut that off. I'm like, nope, I want to help you, but until you break down that barrier, I'm not gonna hold up a mirror for you to just like shit back at me. That's not what this is about. What this is about is I'm going to help you see how beautiful you are because you're already coming in beautiful. You're coming in beautiful regardless if you have breakouts or um, wrinkles or inflammation or whatever. That to me is, not problematic skin. Like to me, there is no such thing as bad skin. To me, I like, I really wanna just erase that from our culture because there is no such thing. It's all communication. And if you have your light and if you're working on that light within you, and if it feels like it's dim, if it feels like it's almost out, let's discover the ways to brighten that up. And once that kind of illuminates again and finds its way out to shine through you, the rest of it all comes together. It sounds wild and it sounds really disconnected, but it's really not. So to review, one, I think that if you've tried to do detoxes, cleanses, resets, whatever, and it hasn't really worked quite yet, but you feel sort of re-inspired to do one, right now might not be a bad time for you to kind of reevaluate and just see like, okay, well, you know what? I really do want to eliminate this from my diet or this habit from my life. I'm just going to try it. Try not to give yourself too long of a time frame or like this infinite time frame where it feels almost impossible. Um, like for example, I know one of my worst habits, and I speak about this all the time, so I know how hypocritical this is gonna make me sound, is I'm constantly on my phone. I look at it first thing in the morning, it's the last thing I look at at night, I'm looking at dumb shit, I'm looking at important shit, it's just, it's wild. Like, what am I doing? 
what am I doing? I do not need the excess UV light. I do not need to strain my adrenals. Like I am trying to recover from chronic fatigue. Like what is wrong with me? But there is a part of me that knows I'm like slightly addicted to it because I am constantly checking my email, constantly checking my Instagram DMs, constantly checking to see if I get pinged somewhere because I don't want to miss an opportunity. And then that ends up me looking at like stupid reality TV stars that I don't care about. I'm like, why do I care about these things? Like, why am I getting sucked into this? So that being said, I am sort of just challenging myself to... To, to, with a small time frame, I'm just gonna try like starting tomorrow, May 1st, right? Like the beginning of the month, I'm just gonna try to reduce my time. I'm just gonna set my phone on airplane, put it in my room, but like around like maybe 8 p.m. and just not look at it until 8 a.m. the next day. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but like, most of you probably are looking at your phones or looking at a screen of sorts right until you go to sleep and it's the first thing that comes up. It's definitely what's going on with me and then I'm on my computer all day. The only time I'm really away from it is when I'm taking Josie on a walk or I'm having dinner with my husband or I'm in a facial. So it's, or when I'm sleeping. But sometimes I've like fallen asleep with my phone in my hand. Like what kind of like, EMF am I giving myself like I don't need that you know so you know that's a great first step it's not it has nothing really to do with my um like my physical body in the sense that I'm trying to make an alteration I'm just trying to make a conscious choice to eliminate this habit that I know isn't really serving me so it's it's ideal to just start with those small things and I'm going to start with like an attainable goal and if I slip up, that's okay. I'm not going to hate myself over it. I'm just going to try again the next day. Um, so when you're doing these resets, whatever the reset may be, you start with, you know, choosing something that you know is just kind of triggering, triggering you. Like, what do I know I'm doing that it's just not for the betterment of me? And then try to see, you know, what it is that's kind of the opposite of that, but that you've been wanting to try. Like the client that started working out, she's been wanting to do boxing forever. And like, she just signed up. She's like, well, I've been wanting to do this. So I'm not, you know, I'm going to work out, but like, I also get to try something that really makes me happy. And I've been wanting to do so. You know, instead of thinking that you're eliminating something, you're, you're kind of like adding something in instead. Um, like with me, when I eliminate the phone, I'm going to add in more reading because I have books I want to read and I'm just constantly like on chapter two and then I put it down and I forget about it, you know, because then I'm too busy reading emails that can wait until the next day. And then like the last thing is to know that it's a journey. It's a part of the ebb and flow of life and there is really no end goal unless it's coming from a self-loving part of you. If you are deciding to make a decision that's conscious in love instead of conscious in fear, then you know that you're you're stepping towards that light and then that light is just gonna shine as brightly as it's going to. So whatever ailment, condition, inflammatory, you know, whatever that you're dealing with will start to really shine through regardless of what you're doing, you know? So I'm getting called to say that my live is almost done. I love that these little timers come up because I always feel like, I wonder how much time I have left and that usually comes up. So I will uh, write my post on the feminine versus the masculine energy or I don't even want to say versus, but just the, the difference between the two and how to kind of correlate. And that's why I like kind of dressed up today because I'm always in... Um, <laughs> like junky clothes and sometimes I just put on like a shirt for these and I'm like okay Haley you can put something nice on and you can just like enjoy being a woman today put the makeup on flip your long hair enjoy a jumper and just be the unique like vibrant goddess that you are so 
anyways that's that thank you so much for tuning in i'm gonna uh, save this live add it to the youtube channel but it'll be on here for the next 24 hours if you have questions feel free to dm me or email me at haley at therapeuticskincoach.com that's h-a-y-l-e-y also if you're interested in the program that i was talking about earlier in the live it is in the link in bio under tsc program i hope you guys have a beautiful week and i will speak with you soon all right take care bye guys